All right, it looks like it's 101 p.m. I know we still have a few people joining, but we do want to get started and respect your time today. So thank you everyone for joining on day three of SEO week. Today, we're going to be talking about using Amazon to fuel organic growth. Now, for those of you who haven't joined us so far this week, I do want to take a moment and tell you a little bit about how SEO week started. So we started SEO week four years ago, kind of as an ode to one of our unofficial mascots and spiritual advisors, Albert Einstein. Albert Einstein's birthday falls every year on Pi Day, which was yesterday, coincidentally. And each year on this week, we like to celebrate his never-ending search for answers with our own week dedicated to search. So we hope you all enjoy and welcome to SEO Week 4.0. On today's agenda, we're going to first talk about a little bit more about how consumers search today. We covered this in the past two days, but we'll expand a little bit more around that area. We'll then talk about where Amazon fits into the equation. We'll talk to you a little bit about Amazon brand pages and how to use those to help fuel your organic Amazon search queries. We'll then talk a little bit about the Amazon algorithm before going into uh, insights and tips on how to optimize your individual Amazon listings. Finally, we'll take the last couple of minutes to help answer your questions. Today, I am very excited to have two new members of our team on this webinar that we haven't had to speak this year yet. We have Hala Ali, who is our director of SEO, as well as Jaquan Murphy, who is our paid media specialist and our resident Amazon expert. Thank you, Steve. Thanks, Hi, everyone. Great. So before we uh, introduce them fully and have them jump in with our slides, I did want to take a moment to talk to you a little bit about Netelixer and where we fit into the picture. Netelixer is a specialist search marketing agency dedicated to helping you decode what makes people click. So instead of only focusing on what's happening on search engines or what's happening in the data, we also look past that. And we try to understand who your customers are, what motivates them, and what prompts them to search and buy products from your brand. We do this with a variety of services, including paid search management, SEO, display marketing, paid social, Amazon and marketplaces, and other marketing technology services. Our team is comprised of over 120 plus fanatically analytical search marketers located in three countries across the globe, making sure that your account is getting attention at all times of the day. We also strive to help you own the search bar. So no matter where your customers are searching, whether it be on search engines like Google and Bing, on marketplaces like Amazon, on social networks, or even in places that we don't quite know about yet, our goal always has been and always will be to help you own all of those search bars, making sure that you can connect your brand with customers and make purchasing for them much easier. We're proud to be a Google Premier Partner, a Bing Select Agency, and the exclusive search marketing partner of UPS. Shout out to all our UPS partners on the line today. And as you can see, we are specialized in the retail category, working with customers across the board, whether it's consumer electronics, flowers and gifting, apparel, department stores, cosmetics, kitchen wares, and everything in between, we hope to be the best retail search marketing company around. But enough about us. Now it's time to jump into the meat and potatoes of our presentation. Today, we want to focus on helping you find new customers using Amazon. And at this moment, I'll hand it off to Hala and Jay Kwan. Hey everybody, it's great to have you here. Thank you for making the time and I hope our presentation helps you understand why Amazon has become an essential part of any search digital marketing strategy. When we talk about organic search, we're stuck in a time where keyword 
thing was big, when link building was huge, when just adding content was what we focused on. However, in 2018, organic cannot exist in a silos anymore. In 2018, SEO, like all algorithms, are now focused on user experience. So if you are going to create a strategy where you're not thinking of the user and you're not understanding your digital consumer, any strategy you create will fail, regardless of how many keywords you track and how many keywords you add to your page. The reason this is, is because people, as Stephen mentioned, are searching, are coming to your website in different ways. Re no longer are they only using a desktop computer. They have laptops, they have tablets, they have apps, they have mobile devices, they have different devices where they can, which they can use to come to your domain. The problem now is it's not only your domain where you have to focus on. Purchases are being made through social platforms. They're being made through different applications. Everything has changed so much that unless and until you change with this whole digital journey, your brand will fall behind. When we talk about search engine marketing, we are not talking about paid, display, social, organic separately. We are talking about everything in coordination with each other. Without the simultaneous and cohesive strategy, your digital marketing strategy will definitely fail. Retailers have to embrace every aspect of the SERP and create a strategy that will help dominate all the touch points. Now, why is that important? The importance lies in the demographics of your consumers. A 55 year old is more prone to click on the paid display ads, whereas a 20 year old will click on the organic. If you do not have an organic presence or you do not have a paid presence, you are losing that demographic. Where does Amazon fit in? 52% of consumers now use Amazon as the first touch point for product searches. What do we mean by product searches? We mean people who are now ready to buy. So if you are not on Amazon, you are not going to be found by 52% of those consumers who would immediately buy your product. So you are now creating a friction process in your digital marketing strategy. So do you conceive Amazon as your competitor? If you do, you are again adding to the friction which exists between retailers and marketplaces like Amazon. Brands need to create a consumer presence. They need to be on every aspect of the consumer journey. And if, if you view Amazon as a conflict in that journey, you are gonna create friction. How do you reduce that friction? By thinking of Amazon as a friend. Retailers must extend their brand on Amazon to capture the best of the both, both of the worlds. Why would you want to exist in a silos? Why wouldn't you take advantage of Amazon's success? It's taking advantage of your success. So you might as well jump on the bandwagon and start working with Amazon for the best of your advantage. Why do you want that? Why would you want to be on Amazon? There are a couple of reasons. Amazon has a huge advantage in just the presence it has in all the search engines. If 52% of the searches where people are ready to buy are taking place in Amazon and you're not there, you're losing out. Search engines are a very diverse sort of ecosystem. People go there to find information, they go there to buy, they go there to research, they go there for, with a lot of different intentions. Those intentions don't always convert. However, when people go to Amazon, they convert. All your consumers that go to Amazon convert at 74% for prime customers and 13% for non-prime customers. Compare that to a 3.32 average conversion rate in a traditional marketing tactic. Why wouldn't you take advantage of Amazon? Another advantage you would have is Amazon guides the shopper step-by-step step through every process, making it very interactive and very intuitive. Because Amazon focuses so heavily on the buyer's intent and not on the informational intent, the journey becomes shorter. So basically what happens is they go in, they know they wanna buy something, they 
put type in this brand, they type in the product name, and voila, they buy. So the CTR becomes really high. So how do we now take advantage of Amazon? How do we optimize our brand, our product line within the Amazon store? The solution is creating a brand store on Amazon. So previously, Amazon existed in a silos. It thought, but we have this whole marketplace, we're gonna have different brands there, and we're just gonna let it be. It succeeded, but now Amazon is going a step further. It wants to take advantage of your brand. And if you do not have a brand store on, on Amazon, you're going to lose out on your own brand. That means you're going to be competing with your own brand within Amazon because there are gonna be resellers there, there are gonna be imitation brands there, they are gonna be stores from China who are going to be selling products like yours, using your brand and promoting it. You're going to lose out on your brand value. So to take advantage of this free self-service, you have to own your branded experience. You have to create a brand store. This will give the consumer the peace of mind that when they're buying in Amazon, they're buying from you directly and not from an imitator. Yeah, and when you create a brand store, one thing that it really does is it gets a lot of when you create your brand so that gives you the control as you possibly can. Right, and that is our paid specialist who knows exactly what he's doing on Amazon. So here is a solution. This is what a brand store looks like. This is the brand store for Lego. So when a consumer lands on this page, they get the Lego experience. They can navigate according to age. Um, Lego, the Lego store can create, put on the products that they really wanna sell and they can visualize it for their consumer using templates that Amazon offers. And these templates are really, really, optimized for the customer experience. So the navigation, the setup, the different products that are promoted or set up in that are actually already optimized. All you have to do is insert your own products there. So creating a brand store on Amazon, why do you need to do that? Because you can add your custom product, you can handpick it, put it within a dynamic framework and have a responsive design immediately. You can add sales and promotions, you can promote that on social media, add promotional buttons and other integrated tools that Amazon offers. And that's all again within your brand store page. A final and the most, the biggest advantage you'd get is that you would have an Amazon template that is customizable for your brand. So regardless of how someone lands on your page and where they land from, they would have the same brand experience they would have within your domain or at least as close as possible with your logo and everything else. That is a huge advantage considering the fact that there's so many different touch points within a consumer journey. Yeah, and another really big point in that is by having the templates and being able to customize your brand and control your brand, that allows you to keep the same tone, the same feel, and the same and the same dynamic across multiple channels. So if your consumer reaches you organically to, to, straight to your site, or if they come in through a paid search ad, or if they come in through an Amazon ad, they'll get that same exact feel for your brand, no matter what channel that they that they're on. And then comes the part of the job: How are consumers going to find your brand page? What's gonna happen? I mean, you can create that brand page, but how will the consumer land on it? Right now, we are limited in the ways consumers can find or discover the brand store. We're very, very heavily reliant on branded searches. That has an advantage and disadvantage. The advantage is your brand name gets promoted everywhere. You can put it in your product listing, you can put it in your um, search titles, you can put it on headline ads you're using. If someone is doing a search in within Google, your brand page can come up higher than actually your own domain. You can add direct links to the store from your social media campaigns, and you can also pay for a sponsored headline ad. Yeah. 
highly competitive and saying I'm really optimized on the back end of what you're doing. So those actors building that campaign to your, to your so definitely take advantage of sponsored headline ads to help promote your brand, your brand store on Amazon and all of the many ways to, to drive traffic off of Amazon as well. Right. And keeping that in mind, another example from, again, from the Lego store, if you search by Lego on Amazon, you can see that the Amazon pages come on top. However, it's still the product listings that are coming before the brand page. Now, if your, your brand is still getting lost, even with the buyer's intent there, unless and until you learn how to optimize that, overcome all the challenges that you face when you create a brand store on Amazon, you will again get lost within what we call as the digital wild web. What are the key challenges? The first thing is it's the brand pages are still relatively new. So newer pages will not outrank category pages in the search engines. Brands have to proactively claim their listings and participate on Amazon to take advantage of this. So you can't sit back and say, I've added my products to Amazon. I'm going to get there. You can't. You have to take control of the brand store and create your own page. Awareness is still low for shoppers. Shoppers don't know that these brand pages exist. They don't know about this, these features, but they can search for the brand. If they search for the brand, and they don't get your brand page there, you're losing out on traffic. You're losing on, out on your loyal customers because they prefer to search on Amazon. And then what happens here? Competitors take advantage of your brand. If you're not listing with paid ads and being there in organic search, you get lost in the system. You definitely get lost. Like in this example here, if you go on Amazon and you search for Nike, Headline search ads will be the first touch point that you see once you get on the search on the search results page. So that's exactly why you want to have your brand store set up so that in this example, Nike doesn't have a brand store set up, surprisingly. So someone goes in searching for Nike and they get an Under Armour ad. You definitely don't want that to show up when you have competitors who have similar products as you that offer products at a similar price point showing up in positions where your customer could be seeing you. going to rank on the Amazon store. You have to rank your brand store in a way that you come up on top, just like you would in Google or Bing or Yahoo. And why you need your brand store ranked? We had a client recently that we were ranking above Amazon in the search listings. That means the first position was our client, second position was Amazon, third position was again our client, different pages. But what happened year over year, the click-through rate was going down because people tended to click more on Amazon. Now, here's where you just lost out on brand traffic, even with ranking. Considering the advantage Amazon poses, not ranking your brand store and not creating your brand store means you're not going to get a large volume of the consumers that you would potentially get. What advantage is there? Amazon has a shipping advantage. So if you're not ranking there, you're going to lose out on all these people who have prime memberships. 73% click-through rate is nothing to scoff on. So the need to create a brand store in Amazon and ensuring that it's consistently optimized emerges from gray meaning the following advantages. One, as I said, Google is indexing these brand pages. The pages are new, so it will take time to rank higher. However, this gives you time to create a sustainable strategy that will help you succeed as soon as this becomes old news. It will also make it easier to rank your brand page than your, pro your products ranking in Amazon. So consider this. Amazon was ranking the Lego products from their own listing from other resellers higher than the Lego brand page. Considering that, you do want your brand page to appear higher. And for that, you need to optimize it. David Hutchison of iProspect said, Amazon has a huge authority among search engines. That could mean an Amazon store could potentially outrank a brand's own online store, which generates higher margins and lifetime value. So you need to regain that lifetime value. You need to overcome these margins. You need to bridge that gap to get 
control of your marketing strategy. So that brings us to the Amazon algorithm. The Google algorithm is driving all the organic marketers crazy. They never tell us anything. We have to do our own research. We have to try to find out what's happening, create hypotheses, and then try to verify those hypotheses. Um, my data head recently told me, Hala, data doesn't lie. But for the organic search marketers, it's hard to find that data. We have to use any data we find from paid, social, and direct and referral channels to create hypotheses. Amazon is much easier. Their algorithm is very basic and the core lies in user experience. They don't care about what keywords, how you're stuffing keywords. They don't care the, about the prices of your products. All they care about is making a sale, whether it's on your brand page or whether it's from another reseller. So the core aspects they focus on is navigation, selection, immediate close, affinity and social marketing, and maximizing potential. That means they've created the perfect navigation system which helps in ranking products that have the fastest closing sales. They rank products higher that have the best conversion rate and have the most reviews. They rank those products higher that will have immediate closings. That means they track the CTR and they rank the products that higher that have a higher CTR. Affinity and social marketing, that means products that are close to each other, that mean they track the user behavior. They say, these people are talking about this product on the social media, this is where the reviews are coming. What other products might come up there that will convert good as well? Then they try to maximize that potential by matching the shopper's expenditure history and maximizing that sale. That means prices might be able to change, a range might change, giving people who tend to spend more products that have higher sale value. Along with the core algorithm factors, we also have the indirect factors. That means those um, vendors have that have used Prime or Amazon shipping to fulfill their product line will rank higher. Higher reviews, higher ranking. If you have good images, HD images, you'll get better CTR and thus better ranking. So the more 360 degree view you can give of your product, the better it'll rank. Brand and product content, information with links, images, bulleted features, always rank better. Again, only think about your user. Two second rule, if you don't grasp the user's attention in two seconds, you've lost it. So you also need to focus on the paid ads. Amazon sponsored ads are a key factor in the algorithm. That means if you add all the organic efforts, they're all gonna fail unless and until you also have an Amazon campaign. Promotions, ad sales, lower prices. People love discounts. Why wouldn't they have rate promotions higher than C, you know, um, other products? So CTR is always the key to push ranking as well. And these indirect factors are huge as well. Just because they're indirect factors don't doesn't mean that this is something that you shouldn't focus on as much. If you look at some of these factors, images, the better the image looks, the more likely somebody will be to click on the ad. The better the image looks in the in the picture or in the descriptions, then it more likely it'll make somebody to buy the product as well. If you look at the paid efforts, by showing up when people search in the headlines for specific products or for your brand. That helps boost your sales velocity. One thing Amazon rewards in organic rankings is how fast your product moves. If you sell a lot of products, then by default, they'll start to show your product a lot more than, than your competitors. And promotions, just another hack to help drive more sales and to speed up the sales volume because who doesn't want a, a discount or a bonus or something extra when they, pur when they purchase something? Right, so now understanding how the algorithm works, we need to make sure we optimize everything in a way that the brand store succeeds in Amazon. It's extremely important to remember the A9 algorithm focuses on products that convert, not those with the most keyword usage. In short, Amazon is already utilizing what Google is now moving towards. Google's algorithm is now all about the user experience. Amazon is all about the user experience as well. So succeeding in Amazon, in the words of Joseph Hansen, the CEO of Buy Box Experts, means optimizing for customer conversion first. 
while including important keywords will help with the AI, brands should focus, recognize that Amazon product listings show up in the top page and organic spots on Google search, sometimes above the brand's own site. So how you optimize your titles, bullets, and everything else in between plays a key role in what off Amazon customers see. So where do you begin in optimizing your brand store? It begins from keyword research. Keyword research is huge. Keywords trigger all of the searches. Keywords are where everything starts on Amazon. So make sure that you're doing you do your due diligence when when using keywords and titles, descriptions, bullets, etc. Focus on keywords that have high conversion intent. So focusing on your keywords that drive a lot of conversions, have high high conversion rates, not necessarily the keywords that drive a lot of traffic. Look look on your other channels for keyword starting points. So your search campaigns, those high converting keywords, those should be a starting point for when you're thinking of things to put into the title. What might get people to move more in the descriptions or in the bullets? And use keywords that most likely match purchase intent. So things that you see from data of, of different channels that people are moving to convert when they search for, those would be the great starting points in terms of keyword research there. In terms of picking the right categories, another another major thing on the back end that needs to be done for Amazon and, and getting your products discovered. The algorithm, the algorithm is based on category indexing. So for something like this, it would be really wise to take kind of a Google shopping mindset where you will want to drill down as deep into Google's product taxonomies in terms of product category and product types. Do the same thing with Amazon. As specific as you can get, the better, because that helps Amazon's algorithm match your product back to the original user query. And category requirements, if you need help looking for that, you can check out this link here, services.amazon.com, and they'll give you a breakout of the different categories and the requirements that you need when creating your feed and putting all the data together to have to promote your products. And one most one of the most important things in terms of titles, or one of the most important things will be the title. Optimizing your title is the most is one of the most important things because that's the first thing that users will see when they're going on the SERP. You'll get all of the basic information like your brand, what the product is, what the size is, colors, flavors, etc. In your title, you want to make sure that you have the most important information there, almost as a way to pre-qualify a user before they even click through to your ad. Let them see everything that they can possibly look for in the title, and that's a great way to help boost your conversion rates and your click-through rates in terms of titles. Search terms, you have 250 characters for optimizing the, these search terms. So when you're looking at your descriptions, you definitely want to make sure that tie in your keyword research. Use synonyms, use other versions and variations of ways people refer to products. If you have if you have a lot of space left when you first put in your products for your additional keywords, hypothetically, if you're selling pants, you might want to have every variation of pants in your additional keywords. So having jeans, having pants, having trousers, any variation from any region where someone might search. Because remember, you might be on Amazon.com in the US, but that doesn't mean that people from the UK or people from India or other countries might not search too. So if you have space within additional keywords, have variations, have synonyms. That gives you a competitive edge over your competitors who are thinking one track minded to only one type of consumer. And the other important thing, Product descriptions, again, this is where you can have all of the information that you didn't put in your title, but relevant to, to securing that conversion. So secondary features, if size isn't important initially, but it could be a factor, you wanna add that there. Weight could be a factor, you might wanna add that there. Secondary features, so if there's a secondary tone, if there's a, spe a specific feel, if it's a special edition, just anything that can be a, a call out that's a selling point for your product that can give your description an edge on how your competitor might describe the same product. Both in paid and in organic search. So while you're optimizing your paid strategies, you work on your organic strategies in the same way. Think about synergy, creating that synergy between your organic and paid that Google or Bing does not allow. 
year over year organic traffic for Google and other search engines is going down by six to seven percent. Here you get the Amazon advantage. You get to take advantage of both organic and paid and they work in synergy to give you the best results. That means you don't have to randomly just put in money and then only then will you get the results. Rather, you get results with free organic search as well. So what you do to optimize your organic listings will also have a big impact on your search listings. That means if you optimize in organic Amazon well, consider this, imagine how many people are actually linking to Amazon. You get that advantage if you have your brand there that when people start linking to your brand page, you will start get rising in Google as well and in Bing as well and in other search platforms. So you're getting a social advantage, you're getting a search engine advantage, and obviously you get the Amazon advantage. So you use auto-targeted sponsored campaigns, you get your optimized product in organic search up as well. So this is a two-pronged strategy which gives you multi-dimensional results in a world where people, consumers are coming to your product, coming to your brand page in different manners. Sponsored product campaigns are important. You bid more aggressively for top converting keywords, you see your organic listings rise, choose another keyword. It'll help you do better in your marketing campaign. Definitely so. And then the more work that you do in terms of keyword research in, in the very beginning to building out your products, building out your titles, descriptions, bullets, etc. When you go to launch these, these auto-targeted sponsored campaigns, then it makes it a lot easier for Amazon to match your product to the initial user query. The more variations that you have within your titles and your descriptions and your bullets and the more relevant converting keywords that you have in these places, when these users go to search for these, for these particular terms and queries, your product will rank a lot higher. It'll show a lot faster and it'll, it'll show the value of putting in the, the back end organic work and your paid efforts. In the end, Which can be the biggest advantage or 
a big disadvantage depending on how well you do your research. Thank you so much to Hala and Jaquan. Really appreciate your insights. I think one of the uh, things off the bat that I realized is that we may need to do another uh, webinar on Amazon soon. So that way we can go even deeper and try to cover some of the paid and organic strategies more in depth. I think that's some of the feedback I've gotten. Uh, while we have a little time, I do want everyone to know that we are having one last session for SEO week tomorrow, which is Friday, at 1 p.m. Eastern time. In that last session, we'll be going over advanced tactics for omni-channel growth and connecting the dots between SEO, paid, and other services. If there are any colleagues of yours that you think would benefit from this webinar, we do encourage you to share with them netelixer.com slash webinar. Again, netelixer.com slash webinar, and they will still be able to join. For those of you who missed out on the offer yesterday, we do want to extend a free SEO analysis to anyone listening this week who doesn't quite know what to do next or wants a second set of eyes to look at what their internal team or their agency is doing. If you want to do that, I encourage you to visit netelixer.com slash contact and give us a little bit of background on what you're looking for and our team will reach out to you and help you with that SEO analysis. Now, I know some people said that we were having a few audio issues, so we'll try our best to uh, fix that in the meantime. If you have any questions, please type them in. I will have the team look and help you out. If we are still having audio issues, I promise you we will reach out to you afterwards and have your questions answered via email. So we do have our first question from Mitch. Mitch is asking, is there a way to stop other sellers from selling your brand products on Amazon? There really wouldn't be too much of a way to stop that. The only real way that you can stop other people from selling your product on Amazon is to not really have other people sell your product. So the only way a lot of people sell other brands on Amazon is buying in, buying inventory in bulk from the original distributor and then working out a deal to either sell on Amazon or fulfill to Amazon. So a lot of the issue with other people selling one person's brand on Amazon is just keeping, keeping tabs and keeping inventory on who you're selling to and how much of your product they're selling. Great. Thank you, Jaquan. And I know from my own reading, there's actually a couple legal cases going on about that right now. So it will be interesting to see how that shakes out in the future. So we'll keep you posted and we'll keep an eye on it as well, because it's something that has become a little bit more mainstream now that a lot of resellers are coming into the mix. Uh, we have another question from Jeff. Jeff asks, can you obtain a brand store if your brand is not trademarked? Hey, Jeff. Yes, actually, you can. The brand store is like a free service. So Amazon is currently not looking at trademarks or any other legal issue. So it's like getting a domain. You might Somebody else might own the brand name of the domain, but you can actually buy the domain in .com, .org, .net. So the brand store works similarly. You can take the brand store page and make it your own right now ahead of anybody else. Yes, and one last thing, Jeff, you do have to be a vendor on Amazon in order to get a brand page. This isn't something available to individual sellers and resellers. You have to have a vendor account and be selling your products directly through Amazon. So that may be something you want to look into in the near future. See if you qualify and use that as a stepping stone before jumping in and creating your brand page. Great question, thank you. Uh, I think we're all out of time. I know we have one or two more questions. Um, we will send them to you afterwards because I am getting some audio issue feedback still. But I do want to thank everyone that joined. Uh, I really appreciate you all being here. And we do look forward to seeing you day four of SEO week tomorrow at 1 p.m. Eastern time. Thanks again to everyone who joined and have a great day.